Tonight's Come In features a seven-piece rock band from Teesside called Rules of Croquet. Now, they're rather unusual because they use dance and mime to illustrate their songs. They've been together in their present form since May 1982, but the original four musicians played around the Cleveland area as Carl Green and the Scene for three years before that. In 1980, Carl Green and the Scene entered the first national battle of the bands. Against stiff competition from close on a thousand bands from all over the country, they won and, as a result, they got a record deal with the RCA label. But elation turned to dejection for Carl Green and the scene when the album The Thing Is and subsequent singles made no impact at all, and RCA, true to the golden heart of showbiz, promptly dropped them. They now felt that they'd gone as far as they could in the standard rock format, so the band had a good think and decided to make radical changes. First, there was a complete change in musical direction. They brought in keyboard player Mark Clement and the new name, Rules of Croquet. But more importantly, the integration of dancers Sarah Sweeting and Nivik C gave the band a theatrical flavour, unique in the current rock field. So tonight, we'll be finding out how successful this mixture of rock and dance has been and seeing four numbers, all presented in the very distinctive Rules of Croquet style. <laughs>
think image is very important because if anyone hasn't got an image, they're just nobody. I mean, some people have a more vivid image than others. Mine's very vivid because I like it that way. Because I am small, so I thought I'd make myself noticeable in other ways in the crowd. We started off with Gary Newman, basically. I started cloning him. And when I joined the group, it just changed to my own distinctive yeah. look. I didn't intend to join a band before. I met Rosa Croquet, but once I joined, I knew that was what I wanted to do. And before then, I was just walking around, didn't know what I wanted to do. As soon as I joined them, I knew. <laughs> Sarah does most of the choreography, but I just do, if I don't think a bit looks right, I'll sort of say, well, wouldn't this look better? But it's Sarah that does most of the choreography because I haven't got any idea. We work out the routines, um, sort of all together, but we listen to them first over and over again. Um, if it's a double routine, or if there's Carl involved in it also, like Dr. Kurd, then um, the three of us all get together and um, we just put all our ideas forward and then join them up and it usually works out the best way. with the band because before I was used to sort of ballet sort of classical um, dance but with the band it's completely different and I found it at first very difficult because um, I, I did my own sort of choreography um, so I found it really difficult to begin with but I soon got into the hang of it and you know I, I enjoy it much more actually than the ballet dancing itself. Um, I do believe that this is what the five of us were looking for anyway. I mean, we've done a lot with Carl during the scene as, um, 
a sort of pop rock band could do. But um, I've always been interested in theatre myself, so um, the, the idea of adding dances was something that really appealed, it appealed to all the lads. And uh, it wasn't a case of trying to attract publicity, but of course, the fact that we have two full-time dancers in a, a group of five musical, with five musical people, is obviously um, a different um, approach anyway. We've all basically learnt to work with dancers. Um, it, it, it comes after time, you've got to get used to the fact that they need time to set up their props and things in a sound check before the gig, as well as we need time to set up the sound. It <coughs> adds a visual aspect to the, the show. A lot of people like to sit and watch as opposed to stand up and dance. I think the singer of a band is always um, a judge to be the focal point of the band and having dancers in has made it easier for me, from my point of view, uh, certain songs I can relax on, the songs where the dancing isn't taking place, I can get more involved in a uh, visual performance myself. <laughs> written and performed by Rules of Croquet. Well, I now have been joined by Malcolm Gerry, who of course is the producer of The Tube, Channel 4's The Tube, which is made, of course, here at our studios in Tyne and Tees. Um, the lesser-known bands that you get on mm -hmm. The Tube, how do you choose them? Um, money, basically, don't you? <laughs> PO, we've got a terrible system of PO in the office. Um, it's quite a subjective uh, process, really. We get about anything between two dozen and three dozen tapes sent in a week now from bands right throughout the country and it's very difficult on we found that in the tube we had to take one guy off virtually everything else and just put him solely under listening to new tapes but it does end up being a fairly subjective process with a researcher coming into the office and saying i think this is marvelous i think we should have them on but i mean uh, do you actually go out and see them yes once we've heard the tape and we like it and uh, we've read a little bit about the band then the next step is to go out and see the band perform live because all the bands have 
play on the tube do actually play live mm. and if they're good they're on um, and it's quite nice to see some of the bands that we had on who were totally unknown like the Masonettes and Joe Boxers end up in the top 20 yeah. so they, they must be doing something right there because <laughs> it's a notoriously fickle business isn't it the mm. music business um, how important is it for a band to be fashionable that's a good question I think I think fashionable isn't the right word I think credible is street credibility in the rock pop world at the moment is is a real bugbear and if a band is credible and they've got certain things going for them then they'll get a hit record the minute that they lose their credibility then that's it if you take adamant or the boomtown rats you know where are they now in this country um and once the press and sort of the the, the tide of public opinion turn against them it's really bye bye to the band's uh, success and uh, I don't know what makes it, I don't know what makes one band particularly credible at the moment, whether it's the Jam or, or whoever, um, but once they lose it, then I'm afraid the records don't do very well. But uh, Rules of Croquet, for example, uh, mm -hmm. are a very visual band. Uh, I mean, is it almost more important to get have the right look <laughs> than to, to be musically good? Um, yeah, I mean, it's the video, not the song argument, isn't it, really? I think there's an element of that. Um, I think the days of sort of very long hair and denim jeans and uh, and coming on and thrashing away for an hour and a half are probably gone now. Even the heavy metal bands like Iron Maiden, a very visual act. They use props, they use dances, they use explosions, they use all sorts of things to, to help the visual appearance. I think a, for a band to make it now who are totally non-visual is extremely rare. Um, especially with the world, the world of video. And a lot of the bands don't actually perform live either. So they exist purely on that visual presentation. Yeah, I mean, Rules of Croquet, you, you use dancers, of mm -hmm. course. I mean, do you, is, is that a comparatively new thing? Uh, it is and it isn't. It, it is for local bands. I mean, I was quite interested to see them using mime and using dance. Um, I mean, not long ago, for a band from the northeast to have dancers and mime artists and use the sort of makeup uh, that we saw in the videos would have been unheard of um, in a working men's club in the northeast um, but nowadays it's quite common um, it, it's, there is a bit of a swing away from it actually some of the new the newer bands like big country are tending to go back to t-shirts and jeans and what have you but even so it's quite a carefully controlled stage managed if, if you watch the bands uh, there's a little bit of thought and a little bit of homework going into what they're actually doing on the stage they're not just uh, coming on as the wood off the street, so to speak. Mm. And how important would you say is television exposure? I mean, is, is it absolutely essential? It's not essential. Um, it, it's very, very crucial. An appearance on Top of the Pops can get a record into the top 20 like that. Um, and I'm glad to see a lot of the bands who appeared on the tube the following week. It was very interesting to notice the record had jumped maybe 50 places. But if you take a band, there are exceptions to the rule. I mean, I would have no idea if Pink Floyd walked down Northumberland Street, what they look like. And I don't think the average man in the street would know what um, the, the, you know, the, the, the bass guitarist with Pink Floyd would look like if he was in a department store. And it can actually, if the management are clever, it can actually work in the band's favour if they're kept well out of the public eye and never do TV. And there's a sort of a, a mystique built around the artist, like David Bowie is a good example. Mm. Um, that can actually capture a lot of people's attention and imagination and by not overexposing them it can create a lot of sort of um, an, an aura, aura of sort of mystery about the band and there's certain bands we're desperate to get on the tube yeah. old-fashioned star quality in a sense it is really uh, it's a little bit i think it's a little bit more contrived than that i think that they're looking i'm a band like roxy music for example who keep this sort of fashionable a very urban sort of manner um, and it works for them fairly briefly for those bands who want to attract your attention mm -hmm. or the attention of record companies for that matter how should they go about that I think that uh, one of the most important things of all and something that's terribly lacking from it, in the situation we've got in the Northeast is we, however talented the band is and however much thought they put into their music and into their, their visual presentation, unless they've got some sort of backup in terms of good management, then they're reeling on, onto a bit of a hiding to nothing because they need that, they need someone behind them who can look after so the other affairs, really. Good management, yes. Yep. Martin Gary, thank you very much indeed. And thank we'll you. be back again next week. We leave you now with the rules of croquet and Dr. Kerr. Good night.
doubt in any of our minds that we wouldn't make it or make yeah make it I would say that I don't think we'd be carrying on as, we, as we're doing now so that we just well not just but we're just pressing on you know you never say if you always say when, when it's going to happen you don't think oh well if it happens or if, if these influences come and you say when we're going to do it that's a, that's the attitude of the band that's the if determination there was, sorry if there was ifs you know we just wouldn't uh, wouldn't carry on you know <laughs> 